Hi, welcome to Linux channel. See, most of you who, who follow my uh, channel, let it be uh, my, uh, you know, students or uh, viewers. Uh, so, hope you are aware uh, that uh, recently I shot uh, a multi-episode uh, video series on, uh, uh, you know, Lippy Cap, which is also a part of a TCP dump project. And uh, you can uh, uh, use Lippy Cap uh, to use as a framework. Uh, to write your own uh, user space uh, network stack but in my example uh, i have picked up uh, from online as i discussed in the previous episode and then i have done some uh, live customization so that uh, you can understand uh, uh, how to leverage or how to use lippy cap and stuff and uh, while discussing in that episode i have also mentioned that uh, if you are interested i may also shoot a video series on uh, our video episode on uh, porting this uh, onto you know raw sockets again see there are various methods are there like i you know again said earlier in case if you have not watched that episode i'm going to attach uh, uh, these uh, both links you can watch this uh, lippy cap video series as well as this old you know raw socket uh, you know video episodes as well so that you can get some context and if you are very new to network programming uh, somewhere you start with the basics or you can also you know consider uh, joining the classes uh, so that you can uh, get an expertise uh, uh, expert training on uh, you know network software programming and kernel uh, network programming and stuff like that okay so that you are not just limited to some uh, you know uh, network fundamentals or uh, you know some socket uh, programming so that you can you know proceed further as any you know uh, data com developer or something much more serious in your career okay so coming back to the topic so these two things uh, uh, you know you can refer uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to port quickly the same example lippy cap see the lippy cap as i said it is picked from an online example you can see here uh, the you know uh, uh, this is the lippy cap source code itself again in the source code you may find some examples and stuff you can use that i mean you can refer that as well and other than that you can also see uh, in my video links uh, you can uh, uh, find uh, the original you know source code of this uh, you know uh, link okay so that's what it is so hope you can see here i have done some you know customization so that uh, this is what more or less the author have written or otherwise you can do some sort of raw packet access as well okay so in previous examples in raw circuits uh, okay again this is short long back uh, if you watch this video you will understand the basics in this episode since this is not a priority i'm going to quickly you know move across so that uh, we focus on porting part okay so we can take any example see i have done one episode on quick packets so these are uh, uh, like tls on or https on udp rather than https on you know tcp see one of the things uh, which i often noticed is whenever i do conduct interviews uh, even recently i have conducted some interview and uh, the guy i always ask a very fundamental question just tell me the difference between tcp udp and uh, in what context tcp is uh, useful or advantages and what context udp is advantages so if you are uh, you know literally serious about network software programming and tcp ip stack is a part of network software programming it's not everything uh, you may work in uh, you know any data com you know switches and stuff which you don't need to much you know know about the network part actually so i mean network layer part but again nevertheless <laughs> you know you should be well aware of and you should be first well aware of this fundamental difference between tcp udp and not just limited to tcp is connection and udp is connectionless i'm not telling the textbook basics i'm telling uh, you know if you are an expert just come out of that so a good example is this uh, you know quick uh, protocol which is udp based tls so you can see in the source code it is quite simple in the main i'm creating that buffer uh, the application payload and then we construct this ip header and then udp header and then uh, we compute this uh, checksum because the checksum is based on the app layer data so eventually we create the packet and send the packet out as per this you know videos uh, 
which I shot long back, all of them are sending packets out. They are not getting the packets in. So that is this example. The next gen, uh, next example is a wipe SIP packets. Uh, once again, SIP is uh, on top of UDP application layer protocol. You can see here, you have this UDP header here. Let me increase the font size. So you have this UDP header here, and then you have this application, uh, you know, layer data. Okay. So again, the same story. You construct IP header and uh, stuff like that. So scroll down, and then we can find a unique example like STP packets. STP is a L2 uh, multicast slow protocol. So this is a switching protocol. So in the case of S you know STP, it is directly on top of you know uh, layer two. Okay, it's a pure layer two. Uh, you know, uh, protocol so it's a layer 2 multicast so the code is quite small you can see here we are building this you know frame and then we are uh, you know creating the socket context and we are sending it out and then in the case of OSPF it is somewhat different OSPF is I think it's an IP multicast uh, but it is uh, L2 uh, I think it is also an L2 multicast as well as IP multicast okay so you can see here this looks like an L2 multicast, this address, uh, because these are pre-registered addresses, okay. You can uh, refer, uh, if you have time, you can refer in uh, multicast address in Wikipedia. So if you are interested, I can attach this link, you can go through. You can go through this IP multicast and L2 multicast here, and there is a lot of things, uh, you know, goes through to understand about this multicast not again uh, with related to textbook basics multicast means uh, <laughs> sending to many uh, broadcast means sending to everyone and then or selectively sending to selective you know uh, participants is multicast it's not that i'm saying it's beyond that you have to you know go through this and just understand what the implications uh, or what are the applications of that you know uh, kind of multicast protocols are okay So three examples you can see uh, okay so what we do is we pick this simplest example to wrap up you can see i'm creating the socket context and uh, the file descriptor will get created and i'm writing an abstract api the you know the api contains the actual uh, you know code here uh, let's just go top uh, let's just take this instead of ospf let's just take this you know stp okay so you can see it's a very simple code creating the socket context and telling which port we are interested and then we got the socket file descriptor if the file descriptor creation is uh, uh, not happened then report the error otherwise you can send the packet with this write api as simple as that usually you are supposed to accompany also a close of file descriptor uh, which I have not done here. So uh, it is recommended you can do that so that it can gracefully tell the kernel that uh, this thing is over and then you can close that uh, you know socket uh, context actually. So uh, hence uh, we take a simple example like this and uh, uh, before porting I can quickly walk, walk through this create socket. See you can see that this is the API which I have done uh, you know as an abstract API. In this API there are two things uh, we are supposed to do is uh, we need to know the uh, you know port number uh, of net device data structure in the linux kernel in the user space you don't get exposed to you know net device data structure all you can do is you can use an iocTL uh, uh, system call and then ask the kernel uh, to give you the port number so that you can do a bind operation okay See, this is different than your regular TCP UDP sockets because in TCP UDP sockets you tell this is the IP and uh, this is what it is and it gets binded automatically to that you know port uh, which is WAN facing or internet facing okay or outbound port if it is just a laptop you have but here it is different uh, since it is a raw socket you can literally do on any port so in that case what you do is uh, you just need to you know do that bind operation with respect to drivers network port port number okay so what i meant is if you do this if config you get this various ports so in the kernel the net device data structure can have this as port number one port number two 
uh, port number 0 and stuff it starts from 0 1 2 3 like that but it is not an array it's a linked list and uh, if you uh, deactivate some port and activate some other port let's imagine you are inserting a usb ethernet usb wi-fi card or something like that okay so then it creates that instance uh, and then it puts it in the same you know chain or the link list so essentially if you go to the source what we are doing is uh, we are doing the socket and we are saying it is socket raw not uh, TCP or UDP socket it's a socket raw socket and then uh, we are supposed to do, do this IOC here and the question we are asking is system IOC that is what is this SIOC get interface index and we are passing this data structure which is our query okay the query what we are asking the kernel is uh, you can see str cpy we are saying this is the device name and uh, size of that device name and we are asking for this device what is the index of that device okay for example this is my uh, wireless port okay wlp1 s0 something like that so we can send this and ask what is the port number and once we get the port number uh, we can see here uh, 